Hello, my name is Kelly and I'm from The Paper Artiste and I am going to do a tutorial on photo cubes. And it's interesting because they come out, you can use all your photos and they look pretty fun. And um, there's all kinds of different varieties of um, crafts that you can use, um, different sizes and, uh, different projects. But today we're just going to touch base on the big cubes. And when you do these, then it doesn't matter how you do the other ones because it's the same, um, same steps. So what you need for your supplies will be, uh, glues. Um, I am using Eileen's tacky glue, uh, cause these are the supplies that I have. Um, so you use the supplies that you have, uh, Tack, the reason why I like tacky glue is because it's very flexible. I'm also using uh, matte medium on mine. Uh, you don't need to use this. Uh, I'm just using it because I have it. Um, I also have Mod Podge that I'm going to seal at the end. And I'm using a matte finish. You don't have to use a matte fish finish. You can use something shiny if you like. I am also using um, art glitter glue. Um, and the reason why I use art glitter glue is because I'm a scrapbooker and I have it. Um, this is very good glue though, if you're gonna do uh, paper products. Um, so you can get this at your um, craft stores, uh, your high end craft stores. Uh, I, I don't think um, I haven't looked, but I don't think the Joanne Fabrics in that have it, but you can order it online if you need it. Um, so those are the clues, um, glues, sorry. <laughs> then the fixative. The fixative is for your pictures, and I will go into more of it. This is what it's called. Um, you can use this. It just protects the paper. If you can't find this or you don't have this, just the low odor clear spray paint will work. Any kind of acrylic sealer will work. Um, spray, it has to be a spray though, because you don't want to wipe it. And I'll talk more about that. Um, stains, um, I used uh, acrylic paint and stains uh, like tattered uh, angels and um, uh, I also used a product called Tim Holtz. It's a distress ink, um, which, which is my preferred um, staining, uh, but you can use whatever you want to use. Uh, you'll need some paint brushes. Um, I prefer these, but if you, all you have is your sponge, that should work just as well. Sandpaper. Um, I used the sandpaper to sand down the blocks. Um, I used 50 grit to start with. And then um, I to smooth things out, I used 100 grit. Uh, and I used um, this uh, regular sander right here. Uh, but, you know, you use what you got. Um, I also used a hand... Uh, they call it a, I guess you call it a, a palm sander. Um, I just put some uh, sandpaper on a block of wood, and then this way you could uh, direct where you wanted to sand. Okay. Um, rubber gloves. Uh, those are handy if um, you don't want to get the product on your hands, and you will. Uh, you'll need a table protector. Um, I use uh, the cereal liners from your cereal. I use those because those work great. Or wax paper. You'll need some rags. Um, just some old rags to wipe and, you know, 
with your hands or your product. You'll need a paper cutter, and I will show you that what a paper cutter looks like, some scissors, an X-Acto knife, and um, those are your supplies that you will need. Now, the wood. The wood comes in eight foot sections. They're like tall, if you know what a four by four is. Um, so they come in eight foot sections. I got it and I had my husband um, hmm, cut them for me. But the, the thing about this is it measures three and a half by three and a half by three and a half. So it's not really four inches. Uh, so keep that in mind when you go to make your pictures. So um, <clears throat> then um, you have to decide whether or not you want to sand it or leave them straight. And as you can see how how uh, the how it's straight there. Um, here's one that's not stained, and you can see how it's straight. I prefer the rounded edges. That's just my preference. Um, also on the small one here, I, uh, I left them straight because, uh, I'm still working on this project. So, um, anyway, that's what you, a uh, decision that you have to make. Uh, the staining, the staining, you need to decide what kind of stain you're going to use. Uh, you can use professional stain. You can use linseed oil. You can use any of those products on these. Um, but before you start though, you should really consider the grain side, the cut edges. Um, they become very dry and, um, when you go to put your glued picture down, if it's not sealed, then the glue sucks into the wood and, uh, it'll make your pictures bubble. So, um, you need to seal that and I'll show you how to do that. So your stains, like I said, I used, um, I used, uh, acrylic paint and you can use it like that. I used acrylic paint here, but I watered it down. I took, um, one part acrylic paint. I believe it was, uh, burnt amber, umber, and I put a little bit of umber in there and a little bit of water and I mixed it up and then I would I just kept painting it until I got it to the color and des, you know desire uh, and you can see here here's the first um, here's the first layer and this is uh, the second layer how it gets a little darker on there then um, you they also have these wonderful metallic um, acrylic paints. I think it was this one that I used. I mixed, uh, on this one here, I mixed, um, gold and this green and, oh man, that really came out really gorgeous. Um, so you can just, you know, use whatever you want. It's your choice how you want to do these. This here is a product of the Distress Ink, um, by Tim Holtz. I myself like the grungy look. Um, this is um, uh, vintage photo on here. Um, this one, I believe, is crushed um, olive on here. Oh, you can't see it. And sometimes I mix them. And then this one here is wild honey. Um, and we're going to be uh, doing some more of those. So anyway, those are... Uh, the different stains that you can use. Um, whatever your heart desires is, uh, you know, there's lots of choices out there. And you can be creative and uh, use whatever you want. Oh, this one here, uh, I use Tattered Angels. Um, what I liked about this one is, I don't think you can see it because it it's the, it's, the camera probably won't pick it up, but this has got like, it's got like little copper mica pieces in it. Um, and it, it comes out real sparkly. Um, it's whatever you want, whatever you want to do. 
So that is uh, your staining and your sizes of your pieces. So those you have to think about before you start your project, what you want to do. Now your pictures, <clears throat> inkjet versus laser jet. Inkjet is what majority of we, what we all have. Inkjet, uh, the ink takes a long time to dry and it's, it won't stay permanent on the paper. So you have to think about that. Um, and what I'm trying to say is if you take and you put glue on here and then wipe the glue on top, there's a good chance that your ink will smear uh, and will lift and move on the paper. When you have a laser jet, it's permanent on the paper. So you don't have to worry about putting anything on it. So when I, before I put these on, I spray mine with this workable fixative. Um, if you don't have this workable fixative, you can use just regular clear spray paint or any kind of a acrylic spray on uh, sealer. Uh, and then that protects it. And then you can put your Mod Podge on there and it won't, it won't move the ink around. Okay, so that's what this is for. Um, also, uh, you'll need your, um, like I said, your paper cutter and to cut down to size. So I think that's it for um, these. I think that's all that you're going to need. So what we're going to do is we're going to get started and I'm going to use this as my table protector and let's get started so I have this piece here and you can't feel it but it's it's a little rough so what I'm going to do is I am going to take a little bit of the glue and I'm going to put it in this dish just a little bit like that and Take my paintbrush with some water, put a little water in there, just a wee bit. Ugh, that might have been too much. That's okay, we're not doing, or if, if you're painting your, um, if you're painting your blocks with an acrylic paint, you don't even need to do this step. You could just paint it like I did with this one. Uh, but I'm I am not using it. I'm using uh, the Tim Holtz um, distressing because I like it. So you just go like this and give it a slight coat. You don't have to do the sides. You're just doing the green cut, and you just put a little bit on there, and that takes care of that. Just like so. Okay. Two, three. Put a little list of all the products that I used for these. Okay, so that's done. We're not going to watch them dry. Okay, so now after that's done, I'll put that out of the way. We're going to go on to the staining of it. So that's your second. After you seal these, then you want to stain them. Um, so however you want to do it, th this particular one I've already uh, stained. So I'm going to go with um, a different color. Now don't forget, you can uh, mix and match these. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to show you how each one of these kind of works. Um, here is... Um, this would be equivalent to what a real stain would be like. So, and you kind of just put it on there like that. Um, and you just paint it on. Now, you don't have to do the middle section right here because your picture is going to be there. But if you're using copy paper, um, I think maybe that I would do the whole section. If you're using the, the heavy-duty craft or um, cardstock, 
you don't really need to do that middle because you're not going to see it. The copy paper, you might be able to see uh, through there. So I'm just kind of, you know, doing around the edges. Uh, and like I said, to stand or not to stand, that is entirely up to you. Um, th this project is great for kids, you know, so um, because it doesn't matter how messy you get when you're doing these, you know, it's the picture part that you have to be careful with. But the kids would really like to do this, I think. So anyway, as you're staining this up, and um, keep in mind that um, you have to let this stuff dry. This particular stuff dries really, really fast. So, um, okay, well, that's enough. You get the idea on that, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna let this sit over here and dry. And um, I'm gonna show you a quick step on um, the acrylic and um, I think I'm going to finish this green, this green one because I really like that color. So what I did was I um, and I'm I'm not even going to worry about the glue that's in there. I'm thinking that's fine. So what I did was um, I didn't even mix any water on this. I just did this straight, and I mixed uh, the gold and the um, green together and I'm gonna just mix in a little bit of that glue what the heck right and um, you just paint it on there just like that straight um, it depends on how many coats you want um, and I don't know let's see can you see that a little better I'll get it in the sunshine there and um, you just paint and then of course you let it dry and don't forget um, when you put it down, see, now you can see where I, um, changed the color on this, but it's not going to matter on these ones. Uh, but you get the basic idea of how to paint these and then you let these dry. Now the acrylic might take a little longer. It might take, a, you know, like a half hour to be sure that these are really dry. Um, so you might want to, so I'm only painting the sides right now so I can set this on its, so anyway, there's that, and, okay, boom, done. <laughs> I meant to set it on its belly there okay so that's how you kind of use the acrylic um, now I'm going to show you the um, how I used um, the Tim Holtz part and you know what I think I'm going to do another I think I'm going to do a combination of um, this is where you should really wear your gloves I don't know where I put my gloves because this is where it gets messy. Uh, this is where it gets messy. And I just take the whole ink pad and just kind of put it on there just like that. And I have a... Um, sponge somewhere. I don't know where it went to. But then I use that sponge to uh, blend it in a little bit. But I'm going to blend um, some brown in with this as well. So as this is going, I've got this going. And kind of goes fairly fast with this um, ink I just I just like the way that the color comes out on these and um, it just it looks good to me but you use what you want so that's how that's um, this is how the stain works 
Now you can mix and match these two. I wanna see what a little bit of the green will look like on that. Oh, don't think I like that. But I'm already committed, so I'm gonna mix it a little bit. Give it a little patina going there. And one thing about this too is um, these will also bleed into your paper when you're gluing them. And I'll show you what I mean. And I'm all right with that because I want that patina look. Um, and so there, there's what that looks like completely done. But I want that patina look. I want, um, see this has been patina, the picture itself. So um, I like that it gets, um, uh, it gets that on there and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to set these off to the side and, and so see, okay. So here is, uh, I'm going to add some, I'm going to add some pictures to these ones that have already been done here. We'll do these ones. So now when you you know, you can let this dry. I, I let these dry a little bit. Um, or you can do it right away. It doesn't matter. Um, but what I'm going to do here is... Um, I need how many? I need two of these. So I'm going to put this one on here. And see how it gets white on, on the paper because it's thick? Um, I like to... Um, I like to color those. So... That's just me, you don't have to do that. Um, but I like that color on there. So you can't see it when you look at it sideways. All right, so now here's where the glue comes in. Like I said, you can use Eileen's Tacky Glue. Um, I'm gonna use my glitter glue. You can use Elmer's glue. It doesn't matter. I just like this glue because there's low water content on it. Um, Gonna put that on there and then see and then I'm going to seal it too with um, uh, another important thing is make sure that the pictures are all going the right way and then once I get that down on there like so um, oh, that'll take me 15 minutes to get that pin back in there um, I like to um, just make sure that it's on there. So spread the glue around. And then once that's on there really good, then I take this and I put a little bit on top. And like I said, this, this isn't necessary. I just, um, I like to, I just like the extra protection. I don't want them coming back up. So then you put that on there and you let that dry. And see, this is where I dip into the sides of the ink. And when it's still, um, the ink is still wet. I don't know if you can see that. But see how it's picking up the, the, the tint from that? It puts a patina on the picture. And another reason why I like to use the brush is I like to have the brush marks on my pictures. Uh, sponges do a great job of making it smooth and plain, but I like the um, I like the paintbrush swirls on it. It just gives it that crafty look. So there we go. That's how you get the pictures on there. So I'm just gonna see how that came off on there. The, the coloring. So there we go. I'm going to let that dry. That takes about mm, 15 minutes or so. And then you keep going. Um, I'm going to set that down. And then here is uh, another one. Oh, this one goes on the top. Oh, I guess I could do the top on that. Let me show you one more time how this works. Now, I had a picture on here. And I didn't like the picture. It <laughs> it didn't suit me. So uh, this is what to do if you make a mistake. So I just pulled and ripped the picture off. And there's still some residue there. So I'm just going to take my palm sander. And I'm going to try to get that off. And so I can 
um, re, you know, put another picture on there. I'm probably jiggling you guys all around. Um, so then you kind of rip that off. I, yeah, the picture I had on there, I, I, I didn't like. So I'm kind of just taking the sandpaper here and just, it's probably going all on my freshly wet paper. And then I'm going to re-glue uh, back on there. So we're not going to do another one of these. But anyway, that's how you do um, that in case you make a mistake. Okay. Now, when you are doing the um, mini, mini ones, um, for example, um, these ones here, you have a choice to do this. You can... Um, take your pictures and you can um, put your picture on here, the whole thing, and then cut it. You would take an X-Acto knife and you would just cut it into squares and then you would have um, a picture. Then what you do is then you have to turn these all over, put another picture on there, cut it, and then turn it again and then put another picture on there, cut it and so on and so forth. And then you would have your uh, top pieces and then you would have the bottom pieces. So um, I'm gonna show you uh, a detailed one on uh, video. I'll attach it to this on how I um, did, the, did this little one here. Uh, this is very tedious. So just to give you an idea, uh, my husband's making a frame to put this in. So um, anyway, uh, it shows how you take the X-Acto knife and that'll be explained in there. And this one here, I used cardstock on and uh, the edges seem to uh, wear a little bit better. Ugh. And see, there it is. I messed it all up, so now I'm going to have to put it back together. And for this one here, I used the copy paper. And um, the copy paper seems to um, fray a lot. And it was complicated. And uh, But this is a fun little um, little cube thing. It's like a Rubik's Cube thing. It, it was just fun to make. Uh, it took me a while. I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll link... Uh, down below where I got this from. So anyway, okay, this um, is the end of the video. Um, like I said, you have a lots of different choices, uh, lots of different ways um, to create your photo blocks. Um, just so you get an idea, I found these, I ran out of, <laughs> I finished. Um, a, um, and I thought, how cool would that be to put the glue this on top of that and then just set it there? I don't know. What do you think? Do you think that's kind of cool? I don't know. I thought it was. And then I had small ones and I thought, well, gee, maybe I can put a small one on those and make it like that. What do you think? I just thought those were different cute ideas. Um, and keep in mind, too, that you don't have to just use pictures. You can use um, uh, craft paper, uh, scrapbooking paper. Um, you can use um, embellishments to put on here. You can put out cutouts. Uh, you can put on, um, you know, jewelry and metal pieces and wood pieces. It doesn't just have to be... Um, uh, just uh, photos. Um, like I said, you could put letterings on here. You could do a, a, a whole wide range of uh, different pieces that you can use. Okay, so the handy dandy thing about this um, paper cutter is it just comes in good. You can just measure the pieces. So say you need a one and three quarters. So you just put that in here. And then you put one and three quarters. There it is. 
And then you take this piece off. Or you can leave that piece on there. That's actually kind of cool looking. But anyway, the, um, the scissors, that's where the scissors and um, paper cutter comes in. Also, the X-Acto knife helps with cutting off um, the pieces from um, the corners of here. Um, so when you're cutting down, you can trim them like so. And you'll see that in the um, other video. All right. I don't think there's anything else. Um, so I hope this little tutorial inspired you and go out and create. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.